call this regular uh, board meeting to order. And, uh, let's see here. First item of business is the uh, special executive session item uh, personnel, and to, that will be the review team for the cent with the uh, Center for Innovative School Leadership, and we need that for 45 minutes. You, you want to start for 30 and see how we go? Just because of the lateness of the evening? Um, I've got a budget hearing scheduled at 845. Oh, so so hotel 845. Yeah. That'd be fine. No problem. We can talk to them all. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd entertain a motion for executive session of the CISLP. I'll make that motion. Second. Second to the executive session for um, tell 845 with the CISLP. Thanks for showing up, ladies. All in favor of the motion, right hand. Opposed, same sign. 7 0. Um, for the amended budget published February 13 paper. Comment on the published budget, republished budget. Wow, that's pretty cool. I would, uh, <coughs> no public comment on that. Do you have any comments? Nope. Do you have any comments, sir? Yeah. We'll go to the business items. Uh, yeah, uh, request that we add uh, uh, three items, hopefully fairly quick, uh, the, to approve, officially approve the amended budget. Uh, number two would be our after school program. Uh, with that grant, we have to add those positions and, uh, and then a quick action item on make up days for uh, the snow days. I'd entertain a motion to be approved the agenda. Mr. President, I move the board to approve the agenda as amended. Second. They move second to approve the agenda with the noted additions. Any questions? Comments? All in favor, right hand. Opposed, same sign. 7 0. Consent agenda items. Minutes of the February 4th regular meeting. Bills for payment, budget report, activity fund, those are all in your email. Also on pages 2 through 18. I'd entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items. I'll make that motion. Then so moved and seconded to approve the uh, consent agenda. All in favor, right hand. Opposed, same sign. 7 0. Patron comments again. Up and coming new board members, you have anything? That's pretty good. <coughs> Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're ready for business items. Um, curriculum Leadership Institute contract. Yeah, this is an item we discussed uh, last meeting. This is uh, uh, something that I believe we need to move forward with. Um, we've been doing some work on implementing the Common Core. Our work has been kind of uh, uh, a little bit here and a little bit there. We haven't had a formal process to get, get through that. And uh, I haven't been real happy with what we're getting at ASDAC. Uh, and we need to formalize that process, and that's why I've talked to these folks at the Curriculum Leadership Institute out of Emporia State. Um, what are we going to do? Well, the bulk of the work is going to be learning about the standards and, and getting that into a formal scope and sequence and, uh, and a, a written curriculum for us, what those standards mean, and where are the gaps, what are we teaching already that fit with that, 
um, and what do we need to pick up and, and, and teach you know, that we're missing. Um, I guess the, the vision for this is you know, everything kind of revolves around three questions. One is what do we want kids to know and be able to do? And the second is uh, how do we know if they're learning it and are able to do it? And then the third is what do we do when they don't? How do we respond then? So the first step there is, is the curriculum. What do we want them to know and be able to do? That's what we're talking about establishing. Down the road, we need to uh, get beyond just a one-shot state assessment, and that's how we decide whether kids know what, what they need to know or not. It needs to be more of an ongoing process. We're, kind of, we're doing that now with our Ames Web and the data that Andrea showed you. Um, we're, we're kind of doing that now. So I think the process is more important than the end result. It's not just curriculum on paper when we move on the fly. It's the learning about it, going through the process with a consultant, and uh, getting all of our teachers to talk through that and understand those expectations and keep us all on the same page. So fourth grade teacher talking to the fifth grade teacher all together about how are we going to teach this multiplication and uh, is it going to be the same from grade to grade to grade? And we have some of those issues now. So, I have a question, and I think I know my answer. But I just want to ask. Let's say you have, you're into this a year, and you have staff turnover. How does this fit in the staff turnover with the people that are driving this? You mean like just one year in? To yeah. what this needs to be ongoing conversations every year. So is a new person coming on board going to be able to jump in and be able to pick up uh, and learn this stuff, be on board uh, yeah. pretty easily? Yeah. I, and and I will they so. require additional training for the year they've lost in developing the curriculum? Uh, the idea is that we get trained in this process and have some governance of how we decide what the curriculum is. and. It's not just we hand them a textbook when somebody new comes in or hand them a folder and say, get on with it, here's, your, here's what we want you to teach. Uh, we revisit it every year and include them in the process. So I guess if we don't go through with this, uh, we're doing some of this work now with ESDAC. Uh, the reason it needs to be a formal action item is because we're talking about a contract. Uh, I, I can't enter, enter into a contract without the board's approval. And, uh, so we can do what we've been doing with ESDAC, and uh, it's, it's less than half price of what we're talking about with this formal process, but uh, I really think we need to move somewhere else uh, and make it more formal. So what I'm asking for is uh, approval to enter a two-year contract with them. Um, I've, I've listed the activities that, that we would do um, on page 19 and 20 there. And it's going to be backwards from that. We're going to start with math and move to language arts. So. Okay, well, I have one more question. Yes, sir. If, if we adopt this way and you get into the writing the curriculum, do you think it will change the textbooks that we have to adopt a different textbook to meet uh, things? Or can, can we utilize the current textbooks that we're using to teach? Uh, I, I believe we're, we're fairly solid there, but this, do, going through this process, having the curriculum allows us to choose our textbook to fit the curriculum, rather than just driving it all in the textbook. Well, I know it doesn't work hand in yeah. hand, but yeah. what I'm saying is that we're going to spend $26,000 and turn around and say, hey, by the way, we're going to need to change our textbooks, and that's going to be another X amount of dollars. And so. I just you know, kind of got to prepare for because it, it could happen, happen, right? Yeah, and it needs yes, and it needs to fit with what we expect kids to know and be able to do. And if that takes changing textbooks, then we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay. Um, it's I think it's more important to establish our curriculum than to say well the resources that we have are good enough just run with it. All right, my last question. Okay. Do you think that this training will allow staff to have the most current 
methodology and teaching aspirations and needs of students in five to five and ten years. In other words, are we are they very progressive in what this, this is the latest coming out? This is what our new standards with the college and career ready standards, which has been called Common Core. Yeah, that's where we're. So everything will be built around the Common Core and. And again, we're doing a lot of those things anyway, um, but we just don't know where the gaps are. How does that say it into the national picture of things? Is it all the Common Core fit with the national pictures, the national standards? Yeah, and there, the Common Core, which is Kansas again, is calling the College and Career Ready Standards. It's, a, uh, I can't quote you, it's 42 states maybe, uh, a gentleman who know. How many states have adopted this? Forty-two states have adopted this. So it's not a push from the federal government. This isn't a, a, a Obama's curriculum. As, as well, I know that the math, the, about the, the STEM, that has been really strengthened lately. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm assuming that some of this is coming down from, from that, mm -hmm. the Common Core is. And I know that from my teaching and ag side, that those that come from the national are working, mm -hmm. trickling down. Yeah. It all fits into that career readiness puzzle. Yeah. But I'm asking questions. Sure. <clears throat> is this something the staff is all on board with? Um, I don't know if all the staff is on board with it. Um, we need to be prepared uh, to work through this Common Core uh, College Career uh, Standards. and. Uh, whether they're on board with it or not, this is where we're headed with our state assessments and all of that. So, um, yeah, yeah, we have to. Yeah. I think, and this is just that we have to provide things, and this is one means of providing something for staff. It's the professional development within there, in the math side. And we're doing it locally. We're we're paying for it to be local. You know, we could send them someplace else and have it done, but that wouldn't be practical. It's just better if we bring them in and do it locally. And again, a good chunk of this is just the training and, and our teachers working through the process and the conversations that are involved are more important than the papers that come out of the deal. I think it sounds like a question that you have. If, if the math is being developed, well, all the math teachers need it one several times together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. K-12. K yeah. yeah, we don't have the schedule yet, but there will be some days before school in the summer, <coughs> some days after school, and uh, during the springtime, and then some throughout. So there will be an added cost for subs during the year. Um, uh, the trouble with taking our professional development days we wouldn't have to get subs, but then uh, if we use that, then what do we do with the other teachers? And, and we can work that out if we, if we need to. We just don't have the schedule. Available. There will be an added cost with subs, but we'll consider that. So, but this is only language arts and math. Mm -hmm. And is it the, how is the curriculum addressed for the other subject areas? It's not with this right now. It, within our school, will it be, after going through this process, we're more familiar with that curriculum process and take it on to other subjects on our own, or how, how does yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. You know, our, our career and technical education at the high school level, you know, it's pretty established with the, with the uh, standards that they have, the outcomes that they have to have there. But the, the science, they're developing new standards, so they're not done yet there. Social studies the same way. They're moving in the same direction with this, uh, the new standards. So some of that is still in flux. Any other questions or comments? It sounds like a lot of money, but it also sounds like you're very passionate. Yeah, and consider this too. I know it's an uncomfortable spot to be in to throw a lot of money at something, 
uh, if what we do now, if we would go through ESDAC and get the same number of days, you know, we're still looking at seven or eight thousand uh, dollars to have somebody come out and go through the process uh, with us. It's just not. It's not as good. Uh, I don't believe. Yeah. yeah. And part of that is a multi-year contract. We could get a little cheaper in the three years, but try to put it into two years. I think I've made a motion. If you so desire. Mr. President, I'm going to board approve the two-year contract with CLI. Second. The move is actually to approve a two-year contract at CLI for 16 days of training. Questions or comments? Yeah. All in favor, right hand. Those in the summit, seven up. Thank you. 2013-14 calendar is the next item. We met with the calendar committee this this week to finalize um, the calendar committee. Uh, the teachers committee is on board with this. Um, this would be the draft of one. I also included it on your documents. If you just tap your screen and click the documents, it should be there on the proposed calendar. It was draft one from the packet. That uh, puts teachers starting on the 19th of August. <clears throat> we have our um, early dismissal days, dismissing at 120 for partial day staff development. Um, we have our after school programs, we will likely utilize that time for uh, covering some of those kids that wouldn't have daycare. But that hopefully helps alleviate that concern a little bit. Um, this is be, this is almost five days above the minimum. Um, roughly the same number of contract days as last year, or as this current year. Um, it leaves us some room at the end in May if we have a situation like this year with uh, lots of snow days. That gives us room before Memorial Day if we do need to. Um, out on some days. Long Christmas break. Yeah. Yeah, it's a full two weeks at Christmas break. And the struggle there is do we go to school on Friday before Christmas and do we have the kids come back the Friday after the new year? Uh, February 21 is listed as a half day professional development, half day work day. That's the date of the music festival. So that's why we plug that in. Really usually March? They used to have a conjunction for each day. So. It's always yeah, first of March back in Chad's day. Yeah. <laughs> Guess I don't get on the stage. That's what I'm going to do. But, any questions you have about calendar? The teachers like it? Yeah. Yeah, the ones on the committee one. It's, it's consensus of this one. The other one went right up to Memorial Day weekend. That's I think there was, a, there, was a, there was a fear of, you know, if we have a situation like this year, we need to make them up. You know, need to steal them at spring break or go after them early. Mr. President, I move the board approve the 2013-14 calendar as presented. Second. Ben Moon seconded to approve the 2013-14 calendar as presented. Is there any further discussion? Amen. All those in favor, right hand. 
Opposed, same sign. Carolyn? Right, left. <laughs> gotcha. Should have had it on the twister. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Worn out from dance, I You know, the guy that does that on the video, he's not exactly buff. You know? And I'm, how does he do that for that? I mean, it's not like they did that in one take. It's harder than it looks. <laughs> how do you All know right. that you can... We'll move on. Yeah. Um, item number 3.5. Preschool teaching and paraprofessional for physicians. Um, this has been uh, this is right along with our goal of the board to uh, make sure we cover all the students with uh, preschool. We still have some details to work out um, with uh, who's going to pay for it. Is it going to be a cooperative thing with Stafford? Um, and I have to meet with them yet on on that. But if we if the board would. Uh, approve opening that position when we have those details worked out we can move ahead open the position and I don't know if we will have to have that 0.5 para position or if we'll utilize what's existing with the special ed so we wouldn't hire that position unless we need it so um, I'm confident we can afford that those two positions uh, for next year and there's some personnel situations that may affect that that we can talk through in the executive session. But uh, um, you know, my recommendation is to create those positions. At last count we were 45 students, is that roughly? Um, <coughs> I, I'd feel really comfortable saying 40. Okay. That's great. I don't have that document with me. Yeah, that's all right. Is that something that's driven as school funding is by enrollment? I mean, like, or is it just a flat, flat amount that we get for having the program, funding-wise? We get funded for students uh, who have an, uh, an IEP, who are special ed students. The other students, we get zero funding for. Oh, I'm mixing, I'm mixing issues. Never mind. I'm okay. sorry. So. Mr. President, I move that the board approve the creation of a half-time teaching position and a half-time paraprofessional position for pre for the 2013-14 school year. Second. Motion. Been moved and seconded to approve the creation of a half-time teaching position and a half-time paraprofessional position for the pre-kindergarten for the 2013-14 school year. Any other discussion? Favor right hand, opposed to the same sign. Seven up. <coughs> Number four, neighborhood revitalization board appointment. We've been waiting all year for this. Huh. Uh, County appraiser contacted me to, uh, we need to have a, a board member appointed uh, to this committee. Uh, if there are applications for tax rebates for you know, improving your, uh, your home. And, can this that's be that's tied to where we do that appointment at, when we do all the others at the beginning of the year? We, yeah. We could put one on now and then. Yeah. And just know that that needs to be changed at the, yeah. that way. It's done. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's an as needed uh, meeting for that. We meet regularly. It would be uh, myself and one of you. Everybody wants to be on that board. Do you want that in the past? No one's going to admit to it. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, maybe John makes it easy. I've never done I'll do it if I want to. I'll nominate Tom. I'll <laughs> Mr. President, I moved to the board for the appointment of Tom to the neighborhood right. Oh my gosh, the game is fine. NRP committee <laughs> <laughs> revitalization plan. Second. Been moved and seconded to appoint Tom to the neighborhood <coughs> revitalization plan committee. All in favor, right hand. Oh, same sign, seven out. Thank you, Tom. <coughs> Number five, recreation.
Foundation building. Um, this is a this is an item. I don't want to go through a full discussion uh, tonight because we could probably spend a lot of time doing that. What I'm looking for is uh, Nick Garcia has approached me about the possibility of the uh, new rec commission uh, building recreation facility. Uh, I think it needs to be more than just Nick and I working through it and we present it to the board. I think a board member needs to be involved if, if somebody is willing, a board member or two to work with members of the Rec Commission uh, to understand the issue. They're looking at adding a facility. They would need to raise the mill levy, which we set that mill levy and we collect the tax and pass it on to them. So technically it's them setting the mill levy, but it flows through us. It has to be approved here. If that mill levy is raised, it's subject to protest petition. Uh, I, so there's there's some sticky issues there that, uh, that need to be worked through. And I think sitting down and talking with some of the rec commission members is the way to go. And then have whoever wants to do that uh, explain the, the issues to the board. Doesn't need to be that you're really in favor of it. You want to jump on the board. But somebody, one or two of you, can help understand the issues. Well, I'm not in favor of it, so I'm on the board. Oh, have they gone through a process at this point to know what the scope of the proposal is? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, what kind of scope of funding are they looking at? Um. That's what we need to that's what this get together and talk about. about. Yeah. This is just to find someone that would like to be on the committee. Right? Yes. Yeah, that's my goal. Is for, against, whatever. Yeah. Got a time frame on here. Uh within the next couple of months to at least uh, have some sort of report back to the board. So some of that is just when we can meet and when we can have a firm understanding and be able to get right. back together. I think you need two board members. Okay. I'll do it. I'll be one. I'll step up. Can't we appoint somebody to take our place? Yeah, it's not a, I, I don't want an appointment. I want volunteers because if it's a, an appointed committee, we need to stick with open meetings, rules, and publish when we're going to meet and all that. So it's not a formal committee. Okay. Thanks, and I'll say, okay. you know, there's ways to fund these things besides just mill levies. <laughs> That's what's going through my head right now. That's all part of the it. discussion. Well, uh, that should... Are you going to talk about that? You gotcha. You betcha. Okay. Everything's on the table. Okay. Thank you. Item F, added agenda items. First one is approve amended budget. This amounts to an increase of $84,000 roughly in our general fund budget. 69000 of that we pass on to ESDAC, so it means about $15,000 extra in our budget. So, no additional tax levy it's because of enrollment increase. Mr. President? I'm in the board of players that I'm going to that to this Then move and second to approve the amended budget as presented. Any further discussion? All in favor, right hand. Vote same sign. Seven out. President Spur. Was that Mr. Garner who seconded? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, after school program positions. Um, as you know, we got the after school program 21st century community learning centers grant for 310,000 over five years uh, we need to uh, create these positions officially to hire them um, so we need a project director it's approximately 570 hours uh, a year a teacher uh, 400 hours a para 400 hours a career lab para 340 hours and then a student helper for about 340 hours. So those five positions we need to create. What's a career, career lab? 
person going to do? Uh, work through students with scholarship applications, um, uh, career planning, maybe some online college courses after school. So what's the, the age is? Oh, the career life para will be an adult. Yeah. Well, I mean, the age for the after school program? Oh, 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 oh. 7 12. 7 12 oh. would be oh. that area. Oh, okay. No, the whole thing no, is, the whole is thing K 12. The whole thing is K 12. But that yeah. person is going to handle it. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We'll share a little more, a few more details with you about the program. <laughs> uh, we could uh, create those five positions. And these salary costs are all paid by the grant, yeah. and the grant is how many years? Five years, and then so it's fully funded for five. What happens that for five, five. or does it start going down? No, it's it's fully funded for the five years, and then after five years, it's it, we need to work toward uh, keeping it sustainable after sometime, five years. Sometimes I think Stafford yeah. got to apply twice for theirs, so there might be another re yeah. and then otherwise they'll find other funding for it. Yeah. All right. And this is for it, it's that we get a flat amount per year, right? Regardless of enrollment. Mm -hmm. like this one. Yeah. Mr. President, I move the board of <coughs> positions for the after school program. Second the motion. Been moved and second to approve the position for the after school program is presented. Any further discussion? All in favor, right hand. So the same sign, 7 up. Item number three, makeup days. Um, we are, with the snow, that puts us about two and a half days short uh, of the state minimum. Uh, with state basketball, um, we're planning to dismiss at 1 o'clock on uh, Wednesday, 2.30 on Thursday, and all day on Friday. Um, to give everybody an opportunity to go that wants to go. Um, that puts us at roughly four days we need to make up. Um, uh, I don't recommend taking from spring break. We're close enough to it. People have plans. Um, and stealing vacation days. Uh, I don't recommend adding time to the day to make up that time. Uh, I think if we're going to add days, add time, it needs to be meaningful time. If we're adding time to the day, I think that's just going through the motions to get the minimum time that we need to. Uh, so my recommendation is to extend the school year. Um, it would be through May 22nd. That would be the Wednesday after, uh, Wednesday before Memorial Day is what that would be. We're scheduled to end on a Thursday, half a day. So this would be pushing that last half day to Wednesday. So they go school all day on Thursday. All yeah. that Thursday. The, the Thursday that they're scheduled to? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The Thursday that they're scheduled to be a half day, which was their last day, would be a full day. That Friday would be a full day. Monday and Tuesday would be full days. And then, uh, Wednesday would be a half a day. And that's May 22nd? May 22nd would be the last student day. Uh, Mr. President, I move the board approve extending the school year to May 22nd. Second. second. Okay, move the second to extend the school year to May 22nd. <coughs> Any further discussion? Um, what happens if there's another make up time? Do we come back to this or do we just give you leeway to add to the school year? Each time this happens, I'd say it snows again. Uh, if Formally, we we are supposed to, but you can, can you amend the motion. To? I just want to say that we add the add the amount of time at the end of the school year to fulfill our obligations. Of time. I would amend my motion to say that. Okay. that Second amendment. Now, sure. Which is right now I'm making my second. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor, right hand, both same sign. 7 0. Thank you. Uh, communications. Board members, 
Uh, I attended a library board meeting. I'm not sure which one it was. There was three years. So can maybe help once. me out with that. You should, you should see me trying to explain the library situation to these fellows. We had some discussion about uh, uh, some of the funds that the library has and, and uh, using them in different ways than they're currently being used or at least utilizing them, the funds. and. Some of the library board members weren't as, I wouldn't say they weren't receptive, but they were cautious about uh, what we wanted to use those funds for. And basically to wrap it all up, I guess that's an ongoing thing to try to work with some of the, There's, a, I think there's an interlocal agreement that the city and the school and the library board have. And, uh, I think everyone's going to try to work with that. Yeah, they want to read I have a copy. Yeah, of I have copies too, so. too if you want to read One was in 1970 and one when the library was built, I think, and then they redid it in 84, 80, 81 maybe. Yeah, it was 1980. So is the governing, is the library board governing or advisory? I'm not sure if Josh is going to answer that. Yeah, advisory. Yeah. The operation of the library is I have I have a, I have some figures that Josh went over. We might have we might have gotten some of that already. But let me see what else they talked about. Uh, Christy went over some of the things. Uh, they 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 are having an increase in use of the library over the last few years that, that is up. They're using a lot of ebooks. Uh, they're talking about some updates uh, with the projectors and community room stuff and stuff like that. Uh, I guess that's it. I just want to congratulate those that worked on the after school program grant. Congratulations. I'm excited the school's got that one. And to the boys and the girls on the state and this reason for a wonderful PD program as usual. Stafford County um, also got an, another grant that um, is through Kansas Health Foundation to promote healthy communities and the school district wrote a letter of endorsement as we were making application to that and there is a part of it that specifically provides for um, a health assessment of the school district that provides funding to do that. So um, that's something that will come up in the coming year. The junior high um, quiz bowl team won the CPL league today. Came down to the last question mm -hmm. of the day, and if lacrosse had got it right, it well it went to a tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. If we'd have lost that, we'd have got third. If we won, we got first. So mm -hmm. worked out well, and some of the answers were very fun. <laughs> the kids get. Is Gail the sponsor? No. Oh. Thank you. Uh, especially co op, continue to have discussions on uh, crunching the numbers through the Obamacare and upcoming negotiations and what we're going to have to spend down there. So, uh, that others a lot of discussion on what the district assess next year and what we cut out. Uh, probably uh, more load for Paris, possibly. Uh, just squeezing, it's like the district has been squeezed. Uh, and I don't know if the new uh, no action in DC effect has any effect. But I think it will have an effect, a dramatic effect, so it could even be worse than what you think uh, because of lack of funds coming in. So, OK. 
upcoming negotiations, which I'm the chair of, will be kind of interesting. So I hope that we can start with those in the next week or so. And I know it won't be fun, but uh, not much we can do, and we only have X amount of dollars to work with. And uh, so I know everybody working together, we can make it work. I'm glad we have a reserve time, otherwise, it would be very your uh, funding crunch comment reminded me at the library board that uh, we also talked about the heating and air system for the library. I know we've talked about it before, but it's it's going to have something's going to have to be done sometime. It's a it's original. Okay, late the summer. Oh, uh, I I I would think so, but I mean, it's, it's it's something that's going to have to be addressed <laughs> before too long. <laughs> All right, we're ready to uh, move on to administrative reports. We'll start with the high school principal. <coughs> you see um, on the report, you should have it there. We have enrollment wise. We are uh, up to two students since last time. We had uh, two freshmen in line. So we're at uh, 158. You can see the breakdown. High school, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. We see if you count the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th graders next year and now project we'd be compared to six students in high school compared to 97 now. So. Let's, let's see. The music festival uh, was held on the 15th. Um, the music festival, we've been, the junior high music festival we've done for a number of years. Um, Lacrosse also has a music festival they host. And uh, we've talked about actually, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a really, uh, St. John, in the other years, they've been hosting it. Lacrosse has for, I don't know how long, I've been, I was told a long time. And St. John had, has attended it before, but it's been a long time. And so we were talking about maybe going to uh, going to Lacrosse to the Junior High Music Festival. That would be a different date than February 21st. That's on there. So we might entertain the idea of maybe going to that one instead of doing one here. So we'll see how that goes. I just wanted to just kind of let you know we've been talking about that. But that is a different date. That one, the lacrosse, would be in the beginning of March. No. Um, NHS, we had we inducted four students in the NHS uh, back in the middle of February. Uh, as Dan mentioned, we um, Junior High Scho uh, CPL Scholars Bowl we hosted. Came down to the wire. High School CPL Music Festival is tomorrow, and it's Kinsley's turn to host. So we have um, 55, 56 students going to that and in Vogel. Um, and you have a should have a copy of the activity count tomorrow night. And to, uh, tomorrow night, yeah, tomorrow night we have a uh, community pep rally, whatever you want to call it, get together, community thing to come out, uh, send off the teams. It'll be at seven o'clock in the big gym, <coughs> so you're welcome to come out. The I don't know exactly who's in charge, but mothers. People, it, I'm not sure. It's kind of dangerous, but who's enjoying it? <laughs> I'm sure they'll. Have, I'm not sure exactly what's playing, but it'll, I'm sure it'll be entertaining. Now, so it won't be real long, but you can come out and cheer on everybody as the uh, teams get ready to leave Wednesday morning. So we thought this was a way that we could get people as much involved as we can the night before to, to recognize all the kids so, and the coaches. Thank you. Come out. Yep, you're welcome. Okay. Um, my report, yeah, PE program was this evening. Um, that went very well. Had a nice crowd. State assessments are in full swing for us. Um, snow days kind of threw us for a loop on that schedule, but we're getting those um, assessments taken. Um, fifth and sixth graders are getting ready to participate in the KK at, uh, basketball tournament March 11th and 12th, right after school. If you want to come watch some. Uh, rising stars play basketball. <laughs> come and watch. Um, I, I'm working on getting my third and fourth grade classes ready to pilot some of our smarter balance testing. Um, this may be the new testing that we see here in Kansas. Um, so I think that'll be a good thing. Right now, it's kind of feeling like a, a lot of work to get that together, but we're working on that. Those tests will be in April. 
Um, my enrollment have been wild. Kids in and out. Um, what you see on the report is not accurate. I'm at 157 today, which is up three from the February meeting. Um, I lost four kids on Friday. I gained three today. It's, I don't know. It's been very active. We've had a lot of fluctuation people in and out. So, um, And my pre-K enrollment is actually 31. Site council was this afternoon um, at 3.30. I was not able to attend that meeting. I was with the Center for Innovative School Leadership folks. Um, but things are, are going well there. Site council has been providing state assessment treats for the students and teachers um, for the assessments. Our next meeting is April 1st, right before the board meeting. And again, always welcome to come. Um, we'll be upstairs here in the library. And yesterday was the first day to have students in our after school program. Um, and I know that's an agenda item for later. Um, but I. Go ahead and share details about okay, the Okay, well, we've got, yeah. we've got staggered <coughs> enrollment. So this week, just kindergarten through second graders are, are enrolling and attending. Next week will be um, third through fifth graders, and then after spring break, six through eight. So after spring break, we should have our full K-8 you know, coming, the programming ready to go for that. And we do anticipate that enrollment will continue to increase as word gets out, parents get schedules arranged, those kinds of things. Um, the programming is for two hours after school every day that school is in session. Um, there is a snack, uh, physical activity, and then uh, an, about an hour's worth of lesson and every day the topic, so to speak, varies. So we've got math, reading, life skills, nutrition, different topics uh, by the day. So, um, Rec Center is helping us out with the physical activity portion. Um, K-State Research and Extension is helping us out with some of the programming. Um, and we do have a lot of people interested in volunteering for different kinds of teaching programming and things like that to go on. Um, I feel like we've got a good start, um, and the staggered enrollment has kind of helped me. As, as you knew, um, we had a really quick turnaround time on all of this. Um, and for me, the snow days felt perfectly because I was at home and had plenty of uninterrupted time to work on this. So it turned out great. Um, anyway, questions about the after school program? program. I can't say enough about how uh, Lisa Cornwell and, and Andrea are uh, working through that and getting that together. It's been an amazing feat. And uh, it's been a lot of work for them up to this point and there's a lot of work to go. So. Um, our evaluation uh, committee we met uh, the other day with the teachers. We're, we have a pretty good handle on what um, what the teachers might be comfortable with. So uh, Barb and Carolyn are serving on the committee for that. So um, I'll need to touch base with them about that. And uh, we will be piloting our new evaluation system next year. Um, a much better system with rather than just one, two, three, four based on lesson plans. That's pretty subjective. Uh, I may give a one, somebody else may give a two. Uh, so spells out the uh, criteria uh, a little more objective. Uh, there's going to be more conversations required. Uh, it's going to take a little more time uh, for principals to go through these evaluations. Uh, but in the end, it's going to be a better, a better system. So uh, once we finalize that, uh, we'll pilot that next year. Um, our State basketball, um, I mentioned earlier, we're dismissing at 1 on Wednesday and 2.30 on Thursday, trying to get as much school time in as we can. Um, 
Substate concessions, Julianne kind of headed that effort up. You've noticed our athletics fund has been uh, running short most of the year. Uh, she's run some concessions and worked her tail off, and uh, a lot of people helped uh, do that, but I want to commend Julianne for her efforts there to help, help with that athletics fund. Uh, this week I'm attending, uh, I'm not sure what I was thinking when I scheduled this, but a recruiting fair on Thursday at Sterling. So we'll be coming back and uh, be in the, in the building, except I'll be headed to Sterling on Thursday for a teacher recruiting fair. We don't have any positions we're filling, but we will in the next uh, several years. So having our name out there uh, and just getting in front of uh, teachers being out there, I think, is important. Uh, on the snow, uh, I appreciate this, the the city's effort to get everything cleaned up. Uh, that went very well uh, around uh, the building and, and just around town. Uh, Kevin Davis, his crew, uh, cleans the snow off of our facilities. They did a fantastic job. We're very responsive, uh, and our crew uh, worked their tails off to get out of the driveways and get up here. And, and make it happen. So, uh, with re in regard to canceling uh, school, uh, in my mind, safety is first. There may have been a day or two that we, we could have made it work. Um, I wasn't comfortable doing that. Uh, some have asked, can't we just have the town kids go to school and uh, not run the buses? We've done that in the past. And, uh, the issue with that is, uh, is about half of our teachers live outside of the the city. So just getting teachers here uh, is a huge undertaking uh, in that regard. So uh, that's the reason we can't uh, can't do that. But, uh, those are tough decisions, and we don't take them lightly. But uh, the uh, CISL team, the CISL team, uh, visits have gone well uh, today, uh, and they met with parents today. They're, they'll be here tomorrow morning. Uh, and the time frame on that, we should have a rough draft of of their report next month. A legislative and budget update, I'll be fairly brief here. Um, a lot of the bills that have come through, uh, there's been a sense that everybody wants to do something with education, uh, whether it's uh, thoughtful or not. A lot of those bills have not advanced, um, so there's been some, uh, some thoughtful discussions, I think, in committees that a lot of those things haven't moved forward. The governor's budget hasn't been uh, officially approved yet, but it's been blessed. Uh, base state aid will remain flat. Uh, special ed funding will remain flat, uh, which means costs will increase. So we're going to, uh, in the end, uh, things cost more in, in, a, in the real world. Theoretically, we don't want to spend more government money than we have to, uh, taxpayer money than we have to. Costs do increase. So uh, I feel fairly comfortable with where that's at for next year uh, down the road. Uh, we'll need to see some movement. The lawsuit uh, decision uh, has been stayed. They basically stopped that, the decision in that lawsuit uh, to allow time to, to mediate. So. One scary thing out of that lawsuit decision, it was favorable for the schools for fair funding that schools aren't being funded at a constitutional level. Uh, one scary thing about that is, though, is they said, the, the decision said that capital outlay should be equalized, which they, the state used to. So the poorer districts, they can't raise as much money with their mill levy, so the state provides some funding. We don't get any of that funding uh, but the lawsuit decision said without equalization, that mill levy is unconstitutional. So if things would have moved forward, we would not have been able to uh, levy taxes for capital outlay uh, unless the state would do something about that. So with the lawsuit decision stayed, um, things will continue on as they, they always have. So. This is really neither here nor there, but it's kind of ironic. There's a bill that passed the House to uh, mandate that schools have a Celebrate Freedom Week 
which I don't have a problem with. I think it's a, a neat idea, but the irony there of mandating that kids celebrate freedom is... <laughs> <laughs> so, there's, there's a lot of other bills, a lot happening. I'm not going to go through it all here today. If you ever have any questions about a particular bill coming through, uh, then give me a holler let me know. And there's the weekly webinars that KSB does. Has anybody watched any of those? I'll send you the link if you want to watch them. It's an hour of your life you'll never get back. But if, you, if you're interested in some of that, I, I try to watch those as I can. So. And on the after school program, did anybody have any further questions about, uh, about that with the career lab? session for 10 minutes to discuss personnel issues with uh, Mr. Meyer. Any discussion? On paper right again. For the same time. Right. Uh, after school Yeah, we can do it all together, would be fine. I would uh, recommend that we hire Laura Davis as the director for the after school program, Alyssa Herger as the teacher, Julie Fox as the para, and Ryan Collins as the student aide. Mr. President, I move to approve the after school program. Then move the second to approve the after school program staff that has been recommended by Mr. Meyer. Is there any discussion? All in favor, right hand. Seven out. The other action we need is to approve the change in the contracts for Dick Smith and Norman Cooper to reflect a reduction in salary, and the district would pick up the capers penalty. And the salary would reduce by the appropriate amount. For the remainder of this year. That's a move. I'll second that. We move and second uh, to approve the uh, contracts as mentioned, adjustments as mentioned by Mr. Meyer. Is there any discussion? I'll play the right hand for the same sign. Any other items of business? Um, evaluation, my evaluation, I need the second one uh, at the next meeting.